All right, in this lesson, we're gonna be taking a look at uh, loops. We are gonna code, but we need to understand why the loops work the way they do. And I thought this was the best way to go about it, but we are gonna, we are going to code. So you may hear the uh, term iteration. In iteration, there are pre and post conditions. There's also count controlled. In this one, we're just looking at pre and post. In another video, we'll look at the count controlled loops. Now an iteration is a term that's also known as a loop. So when you hear iteration or loops, it's the same thing. Now the two that you need to know are the post condition loops and the precondition loops. Uh, we can do this in any order. I thought post condition was the best way to go. You don't just start typing in loops until it does what your program wants it to do. You really need to understand the difference between the two so when you program, you develop good programming habits and that your code runs efficiently. So we'll start with post condition loops. Now the statements of the code inside the loop are gonna execute at least one time. If you are writing a program and you know that loop needs to execute at least one time, you go with a post condition loop. Now the code is run and then the condition of the loop is checked and that's why it's called post condition. The code inside the loop will run and then they'll check the condition. Now the condition of the statement is evaluated and when it's been evaluated, as long as the condition evaluates to false, the statements of the code within the loop will execute again. When the condition evaluates to true, the program will go to the next line of code after the loop. Now when using these, you must ensure that there's a statement within the loop that will at some point change to the end condition to true, otherwise it's gonna run infinitely. Now if the program is running the loop for the very first time, even if the condition evaluates to true, it's still going to run because it's going to run one time. It's not gonna check to see if that condition is true until after the code executes. That's why it's called a post condition loop. Here's our pseudocode for the post condition loop. Um, if you're not familiar with pseudocode, it's just a easy way of looking at code and being able to convert it into any high level language such as VB.net or any other language. So we have repeat, repeat what? Our statements inside the code. How long should we keep doing it over and over? Until, and it's until this condition becomes true. Because when I look right here, when the condition evaluates to true, the program will go to the next line. So we're gonna just keep doing it over and over until this condition becomes true. Now our vb.net code for post condition loops are very easy. Do, do what? Do these statements inside our code? Okay, how long? Well, we're gonna keep looping these statements until this condition becomes true true. So uh, that is a post condition loop. Remember, if you are running a loop one time, at least one time, you always want to go with a post condition loop. All right, precondition loops. Now VB.net is a programming language that has two types of precondition loops. So let's start with the first one. Now precondition loops evaluate conditions before the statements within the loop are executed. This means the code may not run at all because it's checking the statement then it will run the uh, code inside the loop. Now, as long as the condition evaluates to true, the code inside the loop will execute. When the condition evaluates to false, the program will go to the next line of code after the loop. Now, any variable used inside a precondition loop must not be undefined when the loop is first encountered. This means you must declare uh, your variables. You need to be declaring your variables anyway. And when we say declaring variables, we're declaring them as a data type. And we do that in Visual Basic, of course, by dimensionalizing our variables. Now, there must be a statement within the loop at some point that will change the value of the controlling condition. Otherwise, you're gonna be stuck in an infinite loop and it's going to run forever. Here's our pseudocode. So while this condition is evaluating to true, because as long as the condition evaluates to true, it will execute. So while this statement is true, we're gonna run these statements. If it evaluates to false, we're gonna just gonna to jump to the next line of code after our end while. So our vb.net code is do while, this is true, run these statements, that's gonna be the end of our loop. That is a pre-condition loop. Now let's talk about type two. Now VB.net has built in a special type of precondition loop that is not included in other languages for Cambridge. So I teach uh, computer science 9608 uh, AS and A level. And if you're in computer science 9608, you'll know the other two languages besides VB.net that are option are Python and Pascal. Now this is called the precondition until loop. This is not the same thing as a do loop until. 
So very easy uh, to confuse. Now the code in this statement will run as long as the condition evaluates to false. Very similar to the do loop until. This do until loop will keep running as long as the condition evaluates to false. Now, if the condition evaluates to true when the loop is first encountered, the statements inside the loop will not execute at all. So as long as the condition is false, it's going to keep running. If it evaluates to true the very first time it's encountered, because it's a precondition loop, it's checking that condition before the code is being run. If it evaluates to true, it will not execute at all. So here's our vb.net precondition until loop. Do until we reach this uh, condition. Do what? These statements. So do until this condition is uh, met. So right here, if the condition evaluates to true, it's going to exit. The statements will run as long as the condition evaluates to false. And when you look and read this, it's very easy to understand. Do these statements until we reach this condition. Once the condition becomes true, we'll exit on out of there. That is the second special type or the second type of the precondition uh, loop. Now, the best way to uh, see or uh, use these and become familiar with these is to see it in action. So we're going to create a mini program in VB.NET console that generates a random number that we try to guess and it should repeat until we get it right. We should think about this and determine if a pre or post loop should be used and why. You do not just start typing in loops until you get it working. When you understand the difference between the loops, any program you write will be much, much more efficient and it will run if it's supposed to run or not run if it's not supposed to run. If you're just, you know, typing in loops to get one program to work, you're not really understanding anything. All you're doing is copying and pasting. And to develop good programming habits, you need to develop good programming understanding. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to switch over to VB.net. Okay, so Visual Studio 2019, I went ahead and uh, downloaded and updated. If you're using Visual Studio 2017, that's fine. It's going to work the same way. If you're not familiar with programming at all, I'm going to show you how to create a console application. So you're going to go right over here uh, where it says get started. And you'll see there are four options. And what we want to do is we want to create a new project. What that's going to do is it's going to open up uh, an entire thing. Now, you'll see here we have console.app.net core. That's not what we need because it says C sharp and that's not what we're programming in. So what we want to do is if you're not familiar with using this, you want to click on language, click on this down arrow and we're going to change it to Visual Basic. Now, what we want to use is the console.app.net framework. That's what we want to do. Our programming code is Visual Basic. It's going to run on the Windows platform and it's going to be a console application. Now, once you do this, you won't need um, to keep double clicking. You can go right over here and do it from the recent project templates. But go ahead and click on console app. Make sure you're in the .NET framework. Type in next. Now here, we, a project name. We're going to do pre and post condition loop. All right. So the, and then make sure you pay attention to where this is, uh, where this is. You may want to uh, put it in a place, you know, where you can get to it. Because if you want to open your program months from now after you've created others, you need to know uh, where it is. All we're going to do is hit create. All right. And then we have our code. So the first thing we're going to do, and it looks like uh, 2019 has an update. We'll go ahead and uh, download that later. So uh, we're going to have this. And the first thing we need to do is declare some uh, variables. I'm doing this outside the sub. You can do it inside the sub. Um, I'm creating global variables. Uh, and most of the time, we're going to be using global uh, variables. I need um, a data type that's going to give me a random number. So R&D number, is, I've dimensionalized as new random. That's going to generate a new uh, random number. But I also need a variable to hold that number. And it's going to be a whole number, so I'm working with an integer. And then I need to record the user's uh, guess. So I'll do that as an integer as well. OK, the first thing I need to do is generate a random number. And by me generating a random number, I really mean programming the computer to generate a random number. So I'm going to store that into my variable int number. And here's how you generate a random number. You have you have to have a data type as new random, and you do dot next, and then you'll see a set of parentheses. They want to know what is the inclusive and exclusive number. For example, I want my number between one 
Say you want it between one and five. Well, what I need to go to is six. And here's why I need to go to six. The very first number is inclusive. The second number is exclusive, meaning it's not including. This right here will only generate the number between one and five. If I wanted to generate a number between one and 11, I would do one and 12. One and 10 would be one and 11. For this uh, short program, we're just gonna generate a number between uh, one and six. Okay, so once I do that, I'll type in a loop. So do while, and I'll do this while my number is not equal to the guess that the user is going uh, to make. So I'll say console dot write line, and then I'll say enter a number to guess. And then I need to store that into the guess variable simply by reading what they have typed in. Now what I need to do is check and see if they're right. If int guess equals int number, then you were correct. And if they weren't correct, which is the only other option, you're either right or not, you can't be halfway right. Say console.write line. Guess again. And what we're going to do is we're going to make our program look uh, clean. Even though this is a um, sample program, we still want to develop good programming habits. I don't want, we don't want to see a bunch of letters and old messages on the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, clear it out. So we'll let them know. Press uh, any key to guess or to continue. Actually, we need to put this up here because I want to say to guess again. So press any key to guess again. And we'll do a console.read line so they can think about whether they won or failed. And then what we want to do is console dot clear. And what that will do is uh, clear it. All right, let's go ahead and hit control S, save it, find out why we have an error because it's a bracket, not a parentheses, too many parentheses. What is going on here? Console dot read line. Oh, of course, console dot write line. And then our read lines down here. Now we can control S and save it. And remember, if you're running a console application, you want to hold control and hit F5. That'll build your program and it won't close it right when it immediately uh, runs. Okay, so we have inner number to guess. Let's start with one. Oh, I was correct. Got it on the first try. Maybe I should go play the Powerball tonight. So it says uh, press any key to continue. Looks like it works. Well, we also need to test for a number that we don't get. I'm going to type in one again. Okay, guess again. I can press any key to guess again. Looks like it works. Try two, guess again. Uh, three, oh, I was correct. And then it exits. Great, looks like this loop works. There's a major error here, and it's not even a program, it's not uh, a major error as in programming because the program works. We used the wrong kind of loop. This is a precondition loop. Because in this guessing game, I need my user to guess at least one time. Well, you might be saying, well, it doesn't matter because it works. And that's what develops poor programming habits. You can't just use it because it works. You need to understand the most efficient way to write your programs. I know that my program needs to run at least one time. And because it needs to run at least one time, I need to change my precondition or my, yeah, my precondition loop to a post condition loop, and that's very easy to do. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get rid of this um, while part right here. So I have do, look at that, it's already done. Now I can go down here, and I have loop. Now if you just leave loop, it's not giving you an error, it's just gonna keep looping forever. It's very important that you don't forget the second part. Loop until my guess equals my number, and it will keep looping until that condition becomes true. As long as this condition is false, it will run. So it's gonna make sure this is false. So let's run the program and try it out. Okay, so we're running it, enter a number to guess. I'm gonna hit one, guess again, two, three, four. 
Okay, so the number's got to be uh, five. Okay, and it was. I mean, that's the only option left. So I was correct. Press any key to continue. This is why it's important to understand the difference. You don't just program loops until it get it, you get it working. Because what if one day someone says, hey, I need you to design this program, and you find out the loop may or may not need to run. You don't want to use the wrong kind of loop where it runs anyway. So this is why it's best to use a post condition loop because in this mini program, our loop is running at least one time. So make sure you understand the difference and we'll see you guys next time.